Now, how do we frame question using do form? Start the question with do, does or did. If it is positive, we also frame questions using WH forms. Grammatically speaking, did has to be included. You will get an idea there is something is wrong in the sentence. Read it as many times as you can and try to solve the question. Hello everybody and welcome back to another session. I am Nanda Kishore. In my previous video, I had discussed about subject verb agreement. In today's session, I will be discussing about framing questions and error identification. From the second PUC examination point of view, this session, though it is not so important, it is a must to learn as it will be very helpful to solve the passage or to comprehend the passage which will be asked for 10 marks. Let us start with framing questions and error identification. Rules to use do form. Now while framing questions, we usually frame questions using two aspects. One word do or wh questions. Let us start with do form. In my previous session, I had discussed about be forms and do forms and also I had discussed about tenses. If you are thorough with tenses and do forms, this session will be very easy for you. In order to frame a question that will be answered with a yes or no, start the question with do, does or did. If it is positive and doesn't, don't and didn't for a negative question. Later add a subject followed by the base form of the verb and then add the rest of the sentence. Now do form in present and past tense. In the previous slide we spoke about three rules here. So in this slide we are going to discuss about when do we use do, when do we use does and when we use did. Remember when we are framing question for the present tense, we are going to use do or does. Depending on the subject, if it is singular or plural, we will be using do or does. If the, if the tense is in past, in past tense, we always use did. Let me give you more examples as we solve. And when do we use do? We use do depending on the subject. I, you, we, they. This is third person plural, I is first person singular, you is first per second person singular and plural, we is plural here. So depending on the subject we use do and for the third person singular we use does, e, she, it. The past tense of do is did, remember this. The past tense of do is did for all subjects and in past tense no matter what the subject is we always use did. In past tense we always use did for present tense depending on the tense and the subject we use do or does. Now this, these are the exercise from the workbook. Now let us start solving with respect to these rules. The student thanked. First thing what you need to observe is identify the subject. Subject is singular, verb is in past tense. The moment you observe verb, identify whether it is in present or past. Now this one is in past tense. Now how do we frame question using do form? In first PUC, even from the uh, examination point of view, for the first PUC students, this is a must learn subject. This is a mu must learn topic. The student thanked the teacher and as the rule says, whenever we use do form, do, does and did subject or the verb, subject as usual 
and the verb will be in present tense. Let me simplify it for you. What does it mean? Let us start solving the question. Now, you might face a question in your examination like this. Frame a question using do form for the following examples or the following questions. So how do you frame the question using do form here? Now, we got to know that this verb is in past tense. According to the rule here, we use did. If the tense is in past tense, do form is did. So we start framing the question with did. Did the student, the rule I told you, it should be in present tense. You cannot say thanked. Did the student thanked? It is wrong. Did the student thank the teacher? It should be thank. Did the student thank the teacher? Full stop. So that's how you frame question using do form. Next one. Mary forgot to bring the library books. Now Mary is subject. Forgot is verb. And as I told you, according to this rule, it could be any subject, whether it is in plural or singular, we are going to use did. So did Mary forget? I told you that we are going to use the verb in present tense itself. Did Mary forget to bring the library books? You cannot frame the question, did Mary forgot to bring the library books? Then the answer will be, wrong. Third one, my neighbor taught, again neighbor is a subject, taught is verb, English is just the, the preceding sentences. Now, taught is in past tense, so again we are going to make use of did. Did my neighbor teach, T-E-A-C-H, teach English to school dropouts? For instance, if I change this into present tense, this is in past tense, if I change the sentence into present tense, for instance, if this example is in present tense, my neighbor teaches English to school dropouts, then what do we use? We are not going to use did here. Why? Because it is in present tense. Assume that this sentence is in present tense. So what do we start with? Do we use do, do we use does, or do we use did? According to this rule, they or he, she, it. This is the rule here. He, she, it. So my neighbor is not I or you or we or they. It could be he or she. So we are going to make use of does here. Clear? So according to that rule, does my neighbor teach no matter what word we use in do form whether it is do or does or did the verb will be in present tense itself so does my neighbor teach english to school dropouts next one how to frame wh questions now do form is done depending on the verb if it is in past tense we are going to use did if it is in present tense we are going to use do or does. If it is singular, we use does for the first person and third person plural. We use does for third person singular, just like he, she, it. Now let's start with WH questions. We don't just frame the question using do form. We also frame questions using WH forms. Now what are the WH questions here? We usually prefer saying five W's and one H, but we have added two more W's here. The five W's are who, what, why, where, when, and how. But here we can make use of extra two W's, whose and whom as well. Depending on the question, we are going to frame the questions with using WH. First one, these are the types of questions you can expect in first PUC. In examination, they will just give you the sentence and they will have a few words underlined. So you can expect a question like this. 
frame a question or frame a WH question so as to get the underlined words as an answer. So you should frame a question in a tricky way. You need to make use of your brain because you cannot just frame a question so as to get any, any word as an answer. You should be very precise, you should be very thorough and you need to frame a question only to get the underlined words as an answer. So how do you frame question? Now I, I spoke about W's here and how. Which word do we use and frame the question? Now read the sentence. They sang songs to encourage the athletes. Why are they singing song? They are singing song. They sang songs to encourage the athletes. So why did why did they sing songs? Why did they sing songs? They sang songs to encourage the athletes. Remember, did plays a key role here. They did. Why did they sing songs? You can frame question in second type as well without using did. Why they sang songs? Simply leaving out did. You can frame a question. Why they sang songs? But it doesn't make sense. But it doesn't make sense here. So you need to make use of did. You can frame question without using did even though it makes sense but grammatically speaking did has to be included. They sang songs to encourage the athletes. So why did they sing songs? They sang songs to encourage the athletes. So you got an answer that to encourage the athletes. Now the very first two words are underlined here. The mayor was trembling. So here, who was trembling? Right? Who was trembling here? The mayor was trembling. If the word trembling is underlined and as per the question, it says frame a question or frame WH question so as to get the underlined words or word as an answer. So what will be the question here? If the word trembling is underlined, the mayor was trembling. What was happening to mayor? The mayor was trembling now. Or what was mayor doing? The mayor was trembling. You can make use of what or whom or how depending on the question. Third one, the king collected more revenue by taxing his people. Now. How did this question is answered? How did the king collect more revenue? How did the king collect more revenue? The answer would be the king collected more revenue by taxing his people. For instance, if the word the king is underlined and the question is asked, frame WH question so as to get the underlined word as an answer, then who collected more revenue by taxing his people? It's very easy. Who is collecting it here? It is the king. So depending on the underlined words, you need to frame question. Babu's wife found it very strange. So it is who found it very strange. It is Babu's wife who found it very strange is the right answer. Now, next one is error identification. In error identification, error could be an article, preposition, or it could be subject verb agreement, or it could be any other grammatical parts. So you need to be very focused while answering error identification in your examination. The very first example is Nile is an longest river in the world. In my previous session, I spoke about subject verb agreement and in the previous videos, I have already discussed articles and preposition. So if you read this sentence clearly, you will get an idea there is something is wrong in the sentence. So what is wrong here? An. Why? Because longest is superlative degree. So you have to use 
द नाइल इज द लॉन्गेस्ट रिवर इन द वर्ल्ड द इनविजिबल मैन इज अ इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरी अगेन देर इज एन एरर वाई बिकॉज आई इज अ वावल सो इट इज नॉट ए इट इज एन द इनविजिबल मैन इज एन इंटरेस्टिंग स्टोरी अ मैन बिल्ट अ हाउस एंड अ हाउस वॉज ऑन द बैंक ऑफ अ रिवर जस्ट ऑब्जर्व इट देर इज एन एरर बट इट लुक्स ग्रामेटिकली परफेक्ट बट इट इज नॉट अ मैन बिल्ट अ हाउस नाउ अ हाउस इज अ सब्जेक्ट वी आर रेफरिंग इट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम एंड अ हाउस वी आर रेफरिंग इट फॉर द सेकेंड टाइम सो इट इज नॉट अ हाउस इट इज द हाउस डेफिनेट आर्टिकल बिकॉज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द सेम हाउस वी हैव ऑलरेडी मैंशनड सो द आंसर इज अ मैन बिल्ट अ हाउस एंड द हाउस वॉज ऑन द बैंक ऑफ अ रिवर द मैन बिल्ट अ बिगेस्ट बिल्डिंग इन द टाउन अगेन इट इज सुपलेटिव डिग्री बिगेस्ट सो एरर इज अ द राइट आंसर इज द The man built the biggest building in the town. Though it seems very easy to solve the questions in examination, it will be very tricky. At times, they tend to test your knowledge. They might give you a question without any error and ask you to reframe it or error identification, or they might ask you a question error identified, or they might ask you. to solve the question by giving this statement identify an error in the sentence or a statement and rewrite it so even if the sentence has no error you need not find an error and rewrite it in a wrong way don't do it read it as many times as you can and try to solve the question so that's it for today's session let us meet in next session in my next session i will be talking about reported speech this topic is very important and this question will be asked for 5 marks in second pc examination thank you have a nice day